What's up everybody? You're here with the Fly Guy. All right, today I'm going to give you a couple tips for fishing smallmouth in low clear water during the summer months. I live in Ohio, so I experience this a lot, typically in the months of July, August, and the beginning of September, depending on how the fall runs and how the rain cycles are. I will throw links in the description to some of my fly patterns that I use for these situations so you can get an idea of what flies I tie and fish. And if you want to get those flies from me, you can find them on my website at tfgflies.com. My fly box tab on my website is going to ultimately be my fly box in detail for my entire life. So all the flies that I fish and have success with, the tying recipes and tying demos will be there eventually. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel or you haven't subscribed to my email list, make sure that you do that. What I want to share with you today is just a simple approach that you can use to be able to see how the fish are striking and what flies to use next time you go out and you face these conditions yourself. I'm going to start with the morning. If you are up early, right at daybreak, one of the best things that you can do is take advantage of the low light and start with the top water flies that you have in your arsenal. Fish poppers, divers, sliders, chuggers, whatever you have at your disposal that's going to be one of your best times to be fishing top water because the lower light enables the fish to be able to look up and see your offering without straining their eyes. Fish do not have eyelids, so sunlight bothers them. So during the morning and into the mid-morning, maybe close to maybe like 10, 11 a.m., depending on how shaded your stream is, you can get away with fishing top water for a while if the fish are hitting it. So from morning on in low clear water, fishing top water is one of your best bets. And you're going to work your way down in the water column. So if you've fished for a while with top water flies and you haven't gotten any takes, it's actually best to go ahead and switch up and then start subsurface. I would start with your streamers. I'd start fishing your middle of the water column. Uh, you can fish articulated patterns, you can fish small bait fish patterns. It really depends on what type of system you're fishing. If you're fishing a bigger river, you're going to want to beef up your pattern a little bit, have something a little bit larger to offer those fish. So size your bait fish patterns accordingly. Um, I typically start fishing something a little bit neutrally buoyant. If I know that they're not fishing top water, uh, they're not hitting it. What I'll do is I'll throw on a sink tip, uh, short 36 inches, maybe four feet max, and I'll start using a diver. And that's going to suspend that fly up and above cover, and it's going to keep it in the middle of the water column. But you can fish any type of streamer you want that stays in the center of the stream and isn't going to go right to the bottom immediately because that's your next stop. Your next step is fishing the bottom. When you're fishing bottom flies, you've determined that top water and subsurface in the middle of the water column are not productive. So now we're going to go ahead and switch up to the bottom. We're going to be throwing our jig flies, our crayfish flies, our worm imitation flies. If you're not imitating what hard tackle guys are doing, you are leaving fish on the table. Imitate your flies, tie your flies to imitate some of the soft plastic lures that hard tackle guys are throwing. It will help you in all types of bass situations, regardless if it's a stream, lake, or pond. So in the morning, just to recap, we're gonna start on the surface, we're gonna fish our poppers, chuggers, and divers. We're gonna fish as close as we can to the surface and see if they're willing to come up and take. If we rule that out, we go just a little bit farther into the middle of the water column. Throw your streamer patterns, your bait fish patterns, your clouser minnows. The nice thing about a clouser minnow, I will provide you with this tip here, is that a clouser minnow can be fished as a jig on the bottom and it can be fished on all portions of the water column depending on what type of leader and line setup you're using. Whether it's a sink tip, intermediate sink, or a floating with a long or a short leader, that fly will serve you very well. If they're not hitting streamers or any type of bait fish pattern in the middle of the water column, it's time to throw down deep, fish those jig flies, fish those crayfish flies. It's summertime. If you don't have crayfish patterns in your box, you're leaving a lot of fish on the table. Bass, carp, and even northern pike will take crayfish flies, so be ready. When you have crayfish flies in your box, make sure you bring at least three to six because you're going to get them snagged up, you're going to snap fish off, and if you get into a toothy critter or a big fish like a carp, they can run you into structure, go on screaming runs, and break your line. So be prepared. Now let's talk about when you're fishing after, let's say, 12 noon. You're getting towards the middle of the day. 
you had to work, you couldn't get out until after work, maybe between noon and three you're getting started, you're fishing until dusk. Now it's opposite. So whatever I told you in the morning, flip it around. You're gonna start at the bottom and work your way up. You're gonna start fishing your jig flies first. Uh, I like to fish the creek bugger uh, in olive and brown, in your crayfish, you know, rust and orange color, uh, sometimes chartreuse. Either way, it jigs and it can be fished as a streamer. It's very versatile. Um, I've got the tying recipe, the tying demo, and some fishing footage for that fly, so I'll throw that in the description for you. So when you're fishing midday up until dusk, right before dark, you want to start from the bottom up, start with your jig flies, start down deep. Again, you're going to want to have a short sink tip so you can start retrieving immediately and you don't have to sit there and count your fly down. It's not about getting down in shallow water. It's about being able to retrieve immediately. Because if you can retrieve immediately, you're fishing faster, you're covering more water, and you're going to give the fish more looks, which ultimately is going to lead to more takes. Guaranteed. It's the law of large numbers. Now I'm going to talk about what happens sometimes when you throw in the dead heat of summer with high sun and low clear water. Sometimes your jig flies will not do the trick and they'll make a, a very loud splash and that can do two things. One, it can either spook the fish because they're ultra skittish from the low uh, water and the, the high sun and predators from above. They'll get skittish from that. Sometimes they'll spook. Other times, that knock on the water is going to get their attention and they're going to come looking for whatever just made that noise. Smallmouth are curious, so you have the opportunity to look at their behavior. If you can see in the water, make sure you've got good polarized. If you can see in that water and see those fish reacting to your fly, pay attention to what they're doing. If they are spooking when you're fishing a jig fly, it's time to switch up to something a little bit more subtle in the middle of the water column, dancing and darting a bait fish pattern, maybe an articulated pattern, a diver on a sink tip, something that's just going to slip below the surface and not make a loud knock when you hit the surface of the water after casting. That's really important. When those fish are not reacting to the knock and they're not hitting that fly right away and you're not getting the fish that you want on a jig fly, that's when you move up. So after fishing jig flies, I always recommend if they are not working, immediately change over to a streamer that doesn't have much of a splat when it hits the water. A lot of your articulated marabou streamers, a game changer, um, you know, even a clouser with really thin eyes, narrow, small eyes that barely sinks, that type of fly will get results when a jig fly that's a little bit more bulky has a bigger splash profile, spooks those fish. You got to test, you got to experiment, fish a certain pattern for a while. If you don't get anything, change it up. And then if neither of those things work and you start getting towards the evening time and that magic dusk hour where the sun starts to slip behind the trees, now you got nothing left to lose. Tie on those poppers, tie on those chuggers, the frog flies, the divers. Get active with those flies and try to entice these fish out of cover because they will be hanging tight to cover in low clear water. With high sun, those fish are pushed up into log jams, hiding under rock ledges, and as the sun disappears behind the trees, they become more willing to take flies. And that top water bite might save the day. All right, so a little tip on fishing top water when it starts to get a little dark out and it's beyond dusk and you're losing light, sometimes it's best to throw on a dark popper because that fly is going to get results. They're going to be able to hear it and they're going to be able to see it. You're going to have to be a little bit more active with your retrieve at times so that they can find it. And it's also going to help you see it because sometimes you're going to hear takes, but you won't see them. This is for you guys that are dedicated, that get out there and fish past dusk up until it, when it's really dark out. You can really get some big fish that might have otherwise been missed by doing this method. So if you're already fishing topwater and you got the time, go for it. You got nothing to lose. A full disclaimer here, this is not going to be something where you're just automatically going to start hauling fish in by using this system. It's going to work. It's going to help you put up numbers when sometimes the, the situation and the conditions are difficult. However, this is just a rule of thumb. You have to be in tune with what your fish are eating at certain times of the year. Some of your uh, prey items, their colorations in your home waters where you fish, you need to take these things into consideration before you head out to the water. Not all jig flies are made equal, not all streamers or poppers. So you've got to really kind of do your homework, do a little bit of entomology for your smallmouth. It's going to help you. 
some bodies of water. The crayfish are, are dark. They almost have a black top with tan and brown. Others have bright orange and rust coloration. You just got to do your homework and see what colors you need to incorporate into your fly patterns so that you're successful next time you go out. All right, so all the flies that I mentioned are linked below. You can check out their tying recipes. If you don't tie, that's okay. I've got a majority of those flies listed on my website at tfgflies.com. Check them out. I love tying flies for people. I'm at the vice almost full time. So get some flies from me. I'll send them out to you as quick as I can and get you into some quality fish. I hope these tips helped you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you know when new videos come out. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll catch you next time.